Welcome to the first video on Zoho campaigns. Uh, this will probably be spread out over three to five videos. Uh, and this will be video number one. Uh, to log into Zoho campaigns, the first thing that you're going to need to do um, is obviously go to your Zoho one panel and then click on campaigns. If you can't see it here, um, you'll need to speak to your administrator to get access to it. If you are the administrator, you will need to click on admin panel on the left and then click on applications. And then click add applications in the top right hand corner and then um, search for it in the view all apps button down the bottom here and then add it from here. If you don't have Zoho one, and you have campaigns, then it'll just be campaigns.zoho.com and then that will get you direct access to the application and then that will, then that way you can log straight into the system. One of the first things you'll need to do when logging into Zoho campaigns is setting a few things. So what you're gonna have to do is down the bottom left-hand corner, the settings buttons down the bottom. So we're gonna go down here and click on that. And pretty well, we're just gonna run from the left all the way to the right and then down on this page and then all the way across here. So first of all, you have a profile and this just kind of um, puts in like where you are and who you are. And then the other one is company details. So whenever an email is sent out to someone and then they load up like the profile and wanna look up more about the subscription that they have with you, um, this information will show up. So you might wanna go through here and edit this. The other one we have is notifications. This will just give you um, like notifications on your end. Um, whether you want that on or not is completely up to you. Uh, in, in nearly all instances, it is usually turned off. Um, it's probably something you might want to play with over time. Then we have a uh, subscription. So this is just talking about your current subscription of campaigns, like what is the, pr um, the level of subscription that you have and how many email uh, subscribers you can have in your account and things like that. And you can also upgrade from here. The next one is manage users. Um, look, in most instances, uh, you'll probably just have yourself in here, but you might have other marketing staff or any other person that might be creating content. Uh, you may need to add them in here so that they have access. Now, technically you manage, if you have Zoho one, you'll manage this um, under the admin panel or at least your administrator will. Um, so when adding new users to a specific application, uh, you'll be able to control that on this screen here. Uh, so we've got, this person does not have campaigns. So you would add them to campaigns here and then you would select their specific role as to whether they were standard or not. And in here, you can actually um, do it in here as well. Now, if we go back to settings, um, we've got roles and privileges. Same thing again, like can they create, modify, delete and export data with contacts, reports, mailing lists? It starts getting pretty granular um, as to whether or not people can do certain things in the application. And these are all the different things that they can do. In, in most instances, uh, most businesses won't play with this because it just adds another layer of complexity. Um, if you have like third party or remote workers, then there's probably a high chance that you will um, consider locking that down more. The next one is email campaign limits. Um, so basically, um, this will just like limit how often the emails will be sent out throughout weekly or monthly intervals. Um, and you can control that by setting limits, but by default, they'll have no limits. So it'll just send accordingly. The other one is content approval. So this will basically mean that you'll create um, someone from your company will create a campaign and then they will not be able to send the campaign out unless it goes in for approval with a manager first before it can get sent. So it's like an internal process for approval. Um, if you have any idea around how Zoho CRM works, you can also set the same thing up. Someone can't kind of sign a contract um, on a, on a quoted job um, if uh, a manager hasn't approved it. So this is the same kind of thing if you've ever dealt with that before. 
Uh, we have an export policy. Um, so you can export data from Zoho campaigns. There's really no need to be exporting data from Zoho campaigns. You'll learn about that a little bit later on. Um, but yeah, you can also um, set up password protection for anyone exporting data out. Manage senders. Um, so basically this means that whenever we send an email from Zoho uh, campaigns that the sender that it's coming from is a certain person. Uh, you can set up like global um, email addresses in here. So like things like, you know, hello at argento.com.au um, or if you've got like an info at email address, you can set those up as well. Uh, you can add the senders by clicking there in the top right hand corner. And there's something very important on this screen. You'll see it in a minute when we go to another screen, but you'll notice here that it says here set up SPF and DKIM records for safe email delivery. Uh, what this means is basically uh, these records need to be put on your DNS. I'm getting into some pretty heavy tech talk here, uh, but essentially the SPF and DKIM records, they're like a bit of a code. I'm not sure why that's not really loading correctly. Hopefully it'll load better on the other screen. So if we go to domain authentication, you'll see here that the system's trying to look up ardento.com.au as a domain, as a website. And then what it's trying to do is try to work out whether or not the SPF and the DKIM records are actually set up correctly in order for them to identify that Zoho campaigns that you're sending emails from is actually part of this organization, ardento.com.au. And that is how um, the systems, i.e. like Google and Yahoo, identify whether or not this person is fraudulent and they're spamming. And so the SPF and DKIM records are essentially, if we click the setup button, hopefully, um, yeah, so it's not gonna show me in this instance, but um, basically it's uh, essentially like a little bit of a, um, a code a code snippet. Um, if you press this setup button, you'll get given a code snippet for the SPF and then you'll get given a separate code snippet for the DKIM record. And what you need to do is you need to attach that to your DNS uh, zone manager with your hosting company. Now you might need to contact your website people for that um, or you even might need to find out like where is your website address hosted with things like, you know, GoDaddy um, and other companies like that that do DNS hosting. You will probably have um, access to that in some way and you actually go in there and go into the zone manager and update the SPF and DKIM records with some text records. It gets very techy and very nerdy. Um, if you're not very familiar with any of this at all, when you click this setup button, there will be a button on the screen that says email to your IT provider. Just click the button and email it to your IT company and then give them a call and explain um, you know, what you're doing and then they can try and fix it for you. If you're doing this on your own, um, yes, you will need to find out who has your DNS. Uh, you'll need to log into the DNS panel and then you'll need to go onto their live chat or support or the DNS zone manager and then you'll need to create the SPF and DKIM records yourselves. Now, bear in mind that these do take around 72 hours for that to activate. And then once that's done, you'll have to come back into here and you'll have to do what I did just then, which is basically just refreshing the screen um, and trying to verify this here. And you should not see either of these two errors here. Um, you should see like a green tick that'll pop up and it will say complete. Um, if that's uh, what you see, and there'll be a tick here and a tick here, then you have completely successfully done what you needed to do and it should work perfectly fine. It means that from that moment onwards, you'll be able to send out emails without it causing too many problems, without it going to people's spam, um, or getting rejected and getting um, error messages when you're forgetting things back. So moving forward, um, we have this uh, thing called an imprint. So basically, this is just the information you provide here will assure your authenticity to the contacts. So essentially, they're gonna like see this information when they go to the profile page. And it's a little bit kind of back where I said, you gotta update your company data and information because that's where this section is in here. Um, 
And so it just means that when they're kind of looking at the authenticity of the email, trying to figure out, do they know this company? Who are they? Um, it's got your details here and hopefully that's enough for them to identify who you are. So make sure you update that as well. On the left-hand side, we have uh, header and footer. So if we click on here, we can um, basically edit the header and footer information by default. This is what the default one looks like. It has some of your company information down the bottom. Um, you can go ahead and create your first theme and you cannot edit the default theme. Um, there's no way to change it. You have to just create your own. And then when you create campaigns, you select your own one rather than the default one. Sign up pages and emails. So in Zoho campaigns, remembering that people can sign up um, to Zoho campaigns, to your marketing campaigns, to each different mailing list. And this is essentially where you handle all of those kind of pages, the signups um, and things like that. So we have the update user profile page. This is the landing page that the person looks like they see. Um, and then you go down to the confirmation page. That's what the confirmation page looks like. This is what the notification email looks like when they get that through. This is what the form looks like when they get that through. So this is just the, the design element. Now, over time, as this video um, progresses um, and gets older and older, this will update over time and there'll be more edits available on this. Um, but it is a little limited in what you can do. Um, there is no CSS styling or anything like that. As you can see, it's all just kind of point and click and change background color and borders. So it's nothing too flash. In nearly most um, instances, um, most clients usually don't change any of this stuff. Next one is custom fields. It's a little tricky to understand this. Um, I'll explain it as best as I can. Basically um, in Zoho CRM, you might've created custom fields and or there are some default fields that are in Zoho CRM that you want brought over with your data into campaigns. So remembering that Zoho CRM will house the core of your data in here. Okay, and then what you'll find is that the data will then sync over into campaigns and we can choose what we want to bring over. In most instances, you'll bring over the first name, the last name and the email address of the contact from Zoho CRM. But you may want to bring over other things like interests. Um, and whether or not they're opting into certain mailing lists and whether they fit certain criteria on their lead source, depending on which lead source they came in from and things like that. And Zoho campaigns by default won't house that information. So you will need to create um, uh, custom fields against the contact, um, which are the same field type, um, you know, numbers, letters, drop drop down menus, et cetera, as what's in Zoho CRM. You don't have to do it on this screen here. Um, you can do it afterwards and you'll see that in the video when I talk about data importation, which will be the next one. Um, but you can do them in here and manage them in this screen here. The next one is merge tags. So when we're creating an email, uh, campaign, the visual representation of the actual body of the email. Uh, and when, if we want to bring in any field on a screen that's uh, mass created, uh, where we're kind of sending an email out to a thousand people and we want the start of that email to say hi and then the person's name. Well, we're sending it to a thousand people. So we obviously need this to be very transparent where it, it will only show the person's name based on whoever's um, receiving that email. And that's what these merge tags are called. Uh, they do look pretty funky and pretty out there. So you definitely know when you're using a merge tag in an email, but if you want a list of the merge tags and what they are, this is where you'll find them. And on top of that, you also can come down here and you can create more merge tags as well for yourself. So on the top right hand corner, you can click create and you can create a, a contact custom tag. Okay. And then you will select the field um, that you need to select. And then 
you can go down here and then create um, the actual tag and you get to define what that tag would be like. There's also like a male default value and a social default value. So what that means is like, what happens if we send this out through a social campaign and we don't have the person's first name or last name, or we don't have their interest. What do we put in there in the event that there is no data in the CRM? Um, and it's the same with the male default value as well. If we send out an email to someone and they don't have any data in that field, then your uh, body of the email might look funny because it's probably trying to tell them something, but then it has a blank value there because there was nothing written in the database. And so you get to put in here kind of what you want. And uh, depending on what the merge tag is, you might just say like unknown, um, or maybe there might be some standard one called like guest, like, you know, dear guest, because we don't have your first name. So that's where you can manage all of the tags. Going back to data administration, audit logs, um, audit logs is pretty well the same thing in Zoho if it wants to work. This one doesn't seem to want to work. Okay, it looks like I can't show you that. Audit logs is essentially just the same as Zoho CRM's audit logs. If you've ever seen that, it, it basically just tells you um, anything um, serious that's been changed in the system and who did it at what time and whether or not, um, you know, people change things that they shouldn't have changed. The other one is data sharing. Uh, we can go in here and start sharing common data and non-shareable data with campaigns and lists and things like that. You can get a little bit more, um, nitty gritty with that and who you're going to share it with, like with marketing hub. If you've ever used Soho marketing hub, that'll be brought out in a separate video. Marketing hub is a very new social media and like all in one encompassing marketing tool, um, which is campaigns is part of marketing hub. Um, so if you want to share that with marketing hub, then you can go down here and turn that on and off. In most instances, you'll probably just leave this to default. Integration for applications. So at the moment, uh, if you haven't already, you may need to integrate Zoho CRM uh, into Zoho campaigns. If there's any other application that you want to integrate into, you can do that as well. In this video, I'm just mostly going to talk about CRM. But if you um, come in here, you'll need to integrate to Zoho CRM. There is another way um, that you can do that as well. Um, but if you just go into integration apps and then select on Zoho CRM, it will just ask for your authentication and then you just follow through with the prompts on that and it will just do it. It does not mean that it's going to sync data. That's in a whole nother video and that'll be in the next video. So stay tuned for that. So once you've turned on the apps integration for Zoho CRM, it should say like connected, which every time I put my mouse on it, it goes away, but you can see the word connected there. Uh, once you see that you're done and then you can move on to the next video. Uh, the other one is just the marketplace. So there's just some third party applications that you can integrate to as well and integration platforms. So at the moment, obviously Zapier is probably a very well-known one. Everyone's very familiar with that. Um, essentially it just allows um, for you to integrate to Zapier and then Zapier is kind of like the middle gateway between connecting multiple apps into Zoho campaigns. Feel free to explore that if you see fit. Zoho Flow is Zoho's version of Zapier. Um, and that is still very well under development and is still, um, it's good, um, but it's not great and still has a long way to go. Uh, developer space. Um, look, unless you're seriously tech nerdy and you're kind of integrating, um, you know, data into Zoho campaigns, you probably don't need to worry about this to so just switch off now. Uh, if this is something you're interested in is understanding APIs, essentially what happens here is you can inject data externally from other systems or from your own custom systems uh, into Zoho campaigns in the event that Zoho CRM is not being used for some of that data. And you can do so using the key um, in here for the API. And the other one is webhooks. Um, like everything in Zoho, the world, um, webhooks is obviously the first stages of integrations for a lot of um, applications back in the day. Um, and you can create webhooks in here as well. That pretty well sums up the video for the settings. Um, 
Thanks for watching. The next video will pretty well entail around um, synchronization in Zoho CRM and creating uh, mailing lists.